So starting with the applications. Uh, we have <clears throat> seen buckling restraint braces used uh, very effectively and extensively in uh, low-rise structures, uh, commercial, even residential, uh, a, very, uh, <clears throat> a very effective way of resisting seismic forces and providing a strong, stiff lateral system. Uh, we've seen them used very effectively in large buildings, uh, tall buildings, um, buildings with a lot of uh, <clears throat> buildings with a lot of mass. Uh, they could be uh, extensive horizontally or vertically. Uh, you can design very strong buckling restrained braces and deliver a lot of uh, a lot of seismic force through that element. They can be very effective in retrofit again because of their uh, relatively high strength and stiffness. They can control lateral drifts and they also uh, help uh, dissipate a lot of energy, again, reducing lateral drifts, which is quite often the uh, principal concern in retrofits. They, because of these characteristics, buckling restrained braced frames are a very effective alternative to the special concentrically braced frame, which is a common uh, structural steel uh, system. The special concentrically braced frame is very effective in a, in a lot of uh, applications. Quite often, though, the buckling restrained braced frame can present advantages even in the, uh, in the, most, uh, uh, in the most suitable applications for, uh, for special concentrically braced frames. And that's because the buckling restrained braces have excellent ductility. Uh, because of this characteristic, uh, we have a better, I should say, a higher R factor uh, for the buckling restrained braced frame, which means that we have reduced seismic forces for design. Also, the uh, buckling restrained braces are a bit more flexible than the uh, typical steel braces. And therefore, the building uh, tends to have a somewhat longer period and, uh, and requires a lower design strength because of that. Also, as we'll get into in, uh, later on in this presentation, uh, the connections for a buckling restrained brace do not need to be as strong as for a special concentrically braced frame. So buckling restrained braced frames are a very, uh, a very important uh, uh, a very effective alternative to special concentrically braced frames. They also are an alternative to the R equals 3 concentrically braced frame. So even in areas in seismic design category C, for example, or perhaps even seismic design category B, where one can use a, 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 an R equals 3 system without a lot of special detailing, uh, the advantages of the buckling restrained braced frame uh, are significant in terms of reducing the required strength, especially uh, especially in areas where uh, foundations are uh, are difficult and expensive. So here's a diagram of the uh, ASC seven um, response spectrum uh, as reduced for a special concentrically braced frame and an equivalent buckling restrained braced frame. So the sort of gray line on top you can take to be the, uh, uh, the design basis earthquake spectrum that ASE 7 gives us, and then reduced with, so that would be using an R factor of 1, uh, and then we reduce it with an R factor of 6 for a special concentrically braced frame, or an R factor of 8 for a buckling restrained braced frame. So there's already an advantage there in the uh, different R factor essentially a 25% difference in that R factor has a similar effect in the, uh, in the uh, uh, required base shear strength. The other component that I mentioned earlier is the difference in period. And depending on where you are in the spectrum, uh, the, uh, the period for a special concentrically braced frame might be significantly uh, longer than a period for a buckling restrained braced frame. The approximate period equations in ASE 7 uh, have different coefficients so that the calculated, uh, the approximate period um, that, one, that one uses uh, will be 50% longer for a buckling restrained braced frame 
uh, as compared to a special concentrically braced frame. 